Hi guys, hope you had a great weekend and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about um, something that's been a little bit controversial and I have been meaning to talk about this for a while, metabolic damage. Does it exist? Does it, is it all bullshit? Um, is it the reason why you've gained weight on Raw Till 4? Now, the scientific evidence to support the theory of metabolic damage is pretty thin on the ground and that's probably why the, most of the evidence has been just anecdotal. Um, so I wanted to add my voice to um, the debate and share some of my experience and then you guys can make up your own minds. Um, I was mainly prompted to do this because I watched quite a few months ago actually, I've been meaning to do this for so long, um, I watched a couple of videos um, from Brianna Jackfruitson after she was banned from um, the Facebook Raw Till 4 Thai Fruit Festival group and banned from coming to the festival because she had basically claimed that metabolic damage doesn't exist, it's all bullshit and, you know, Raw Till 4 is just making people fat. Now, I do agree that if you're not really active, if you're not, you know, out there cycling, doing lots of cardio and stuff like that and you're doing Raw Till 4... Uh, you know, eating a lot of car carbs and just eating a lot of calories in general from fruit and then not burning them off, um, you are going to gain weight. I know a lot of people that it's happened to, it happened to me. Um, I don't think it's the most optimal lifestyle unless you are active and burning off the calories. Um, but that's not really what I want to talk about necessarily here. I just want to talk about metabolic damage in general and my experience of it. Um, if you guys watched my vegan story, um, you will know that I've had a little bit of yo-yoing, not just with my veganism, but also with my weight. So before I started modeling, when I was sort of about, well, up until the age of about 19, between 15 and 19, I was pretty curvaceous. I was a size UK 12, um, big boobs, big ass. Um, I was probably like 39 inches on the hips. Um, whereas now I'm about 36. So I'm quite a bit smaller now. Um, I was vegetarian. Um, I went vegan first when I was about 16, 17, but I was mainly a junk food vegan. And I didn't lose the weight until I was 19. And I'd started taking some diet pills because I was not very happy with how I looked. Um, I was, you know, I'd been jogging every single day, but because I'd been eating a lot of vegetarian junk food, like pizzas and ice cream, um, I wasn't really losing weight. So I started taking some diet pills, managed to get down to like a sort of 10 or something like that. But then it was only when I went on the Depo-Provera injection and I became severely depressed and like suicidally depressed and was not eating um, that I went down to a size six. Um, started modeling around that time as well. Um, and then I was only doing it sort of part time while I was at uni. I wasn't really doing it seriously. And then as I recovered from my depression, my weight slowly started to creep back up. And around this time, I think it was also the, my weight started to creep up because I'd actually started to eat dairy again. I was traveling around Australia and I just started eating ice cream. So it was probably because I was eating animal products. Um, so yeah, uh, then I started training, doing bodybuilding, I was eating protein shakes, I was taking a lot of fat burners, you know, sort of caffeine tablets, CLA, BCAA, I think the fat burners in particular would have damaged my metabolism. Um, and yeah, I was quite sort of bulky, quite muscly, I was probably like a size 10 at this point, but I was generally not very happy in my skin, I didn't really like the way I looked, I didn't like how big my thighs were, how big my arms were. All I wanted was to be lean and slim and, you know, look like the girls in fashion magazines, as so many women do. Um, so, yeah, whether that's right or wrong, whatever your judgments about that are, you know, you're, you're free to have those. But that's just where I was, you know, in my headspace. I wanted to be slim. Um, so, yeah, then I went 
I, I started modeling full time. I moved to London and decided to become a full time model, I signed with an agency in London. Um, they took me as a size 10 because they were a commercial agency and they really liked my look as well. Um, and I was doing mainly hair work anyway, so it wasn't really so important to be super skinny, but I wanted to be. So I started dropping my calories and I started to eat hardly anything. Again, I was taking diet pills and I became very, very thin. Um, actually, I became too thin and my agency told me that I had to, you know, gain a little bit of the weight back. Not all of it, but they just said like stay around a size eight. Um, what I found was that it was, you know, in order to maintain a size eight, which is a little bit smaller than my body naturally wanted to be at as a vegetarian um I had to restrict I still had to keep restricting my calories like I wasn't really eating as much as a normal person would and if I did start eating as much as a normal person would my weight would go back up and it would get you know to a, a level that I wasn't comfortable with um now I can show you what I looked like after my first contract in India um now in India they're not so strict about models measurements in fact um, when I was there, the girls that were a little bit curvier were actually doing, you know, booking more sort of jobs and working, not necessarily doing like amazing editorials and campaigns and stuff like that, but they were booking catalogs regularly and making good money. So I kind of wanted to do the same. And so I started eating. I started eating as much as I wanted. I was vegetarian. So I was eating a lot of paneer, which is like an Indian cottage cheese and just loving life and drinking alcohol and stuff like that. I mean, I was already drinking alcohol anyway, but um, mainly I allowed myself to eat as much as I wanted. And now here is my casting tape from when I returned to India. This was a tape that I sent to my scout who was proposing me for an agency in Cape Town. Now, as you can see, I'm quite a bit bigger here and I'm too big for modeling unless, you know, well, it's, I'm not really a plus, I'm not a, pl a plus size model in this video, but I'm, you know, too big for sort of straight size modeling. I'm probably like a size 10 here. Um, and I didn't get that contract. And to be honest, I'm not surprised I didn't get that contract because I was uncomfortable with um, how curvy I'd become. I'm not, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying I looked bad, but for modeling, it wasn't great. Um, so again, I started cutting my calories. Now, um, I, when I was in Thailand, that was when, um, that was when I, you know, first went to the Rotor 4 Thai Fruit Festival, because at this point I was now, I think I was 28, um, and I had been calorie restricting, um, for about six or seven years. Well, Actually, if you talk about it in total, it had been more than 10 years. I'd been up and down, crash dieting, diet pills, all that stuff. And at that point, like you can see my casting video here that I did just before I went to the Raw Till 4 Thai Fruit Festival. And I look great. Like, I'm not saying that I look bad, but I was starving myself. And, you know, I don't think that I look like a person who's starving themselves. I don't look anorexic, but I was pretty much eating just a piece of fruit in the morning and then a very small meal in the evening, like not very, not really eating very much. Um, and no matter how much I dropped my calories, my weight just wasn't shifting. I was eating about a thousand, a thousand calories a day, which is almost a starvation diet. 800 is like a really dangerously low amount. So I was kind of approaching that. I was hungry all the time and yet I wasn't as thin as I wanted to be. Um, so yeah, I just really felt like I need to do something because this is just not working anymore. So that's when I went to the Thai Fruit Festival, spoke to Ruby from Ruby Raw about fruitarianism. Ruby had lost a lot of weight um, after becoming raw vegan and then fruitarian. So I decided to give the lifestyle a go. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that in the beginning, I did actually gain weight doing raw till four. And I think that this is because I wasn't active. I wasn't really I wasn't going to the gym, I wasn't running, I wasn't cycling, I wasn't doing anything really. So obviously you're going to gain weight. Um, it was only after I started adopting a more intuitive eating approach and then slightly more starch solution that I actually started to lose the weight. Um, 
So now I want to show you my video from Bali. I'm eating as much as I want on a whole foods, plant-based, high carb, low fat, but not super strict about it. Like I'm not freaking out if there's oil. I'm not freaking, I'm having French fries and this is how I look eating as much as I want. Now, if you compare that to when I was eating as much as I wanted on a vegetarian diet, it's very, very different. And now here I want to show you after four months of living in Bali, I'm eating quite a lot of raw foods by this point. Not 100% raw, but I'm high raw. Um, and I've been surfing every day and just, you know, loving life, being active and just living really healthily. And I think this was the best I've ever looked. Um, and at 30 years old, looking even better than I did at 22, you know, I think it's absolutely winning, you know. Um, now I want to show you just quickly what I look like now. I'm not eating as much raw foods because I've been in England and, you know, it's kind of cold. So I don't want to eat raw. You kind of want comfort foods, cooked foods. Um, I have been eating a little bit of junk food, which is why I'm probably not as like tight and toned and slim as I was in Bali. But now that we're moving into summer, I'm definitely going to adopt more raw foods and superfoods and things like that into my diet. So that's okay. This video is getting a little bit long, so I kind of want to wrap it up now. Um, so to anybody who is wondering about metabolic damage, I hope that my story can you know, just give you some of the information that you need in researching this further. I think that it exists. For me, you know, it definitely did seem to affect me. Um, and the only thing that managed to heal my body was adopting a plant-based diet and cutting out all animal products. If I ate any animal products, any dairy, any eggs, it was very, very difficult for me to, for me to maintain my weight. And I've done that whole high protein, low carb thing as well. And it was a struggle and I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't advocate it. It does strip you down quite quickly, but you feel like shit and it's completely unsustainable. So then as soon as you start eating again, you just put the weight back on. And I know lots of models do it, but um, I've seen them yo-yo, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of models who will adopt a really, really strict eating plan and then they'll gain weight after they, after they start eating normally. They constantly have to, you know, keep it up. Otherwise they just start losing work. And most models do not have the kind of career longevity that I have had most of them quit at about 25 because they can't keep up the calorie restriction so you know if you're wanting to maintain a healthy body and a nice slim weight long term I think the only way to go is whole foods plant-based vegan keep the vegan junk food to a minimum I understand it is nice sometimes to have some fake melted cheese um you know, some tofurkey sausage and all that stuff, gorgeous, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with doing it, but I don't think you're going to be able to maintain the weight that, you know, you're not going to be able to maintain a healthy weight if you're eating that stuff all the time. Once in a while as a treat is fine. Um, also check out, this This was really, like, this video really, really spurred me on. Um, I'll dig it up somewhere. Joe Best did a video um, on his channel, Best Transformation, on the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, where he talked about what, you know, the way to bring your set point weight, which is the weight that your body naturally wants to sit at, down. Um, so definitely check that out. For me, after after watching that video, that spurred me on to keep trying um, the plant-based thing, even though I had gained weight, because I was just like, this just makes sense. And it does make sense, you know? If you're eating more plant foods, um, you know, the calories are low, but the nutrition is high. It makes sense. It's so hard to overeat when you're eating like that. Whereas if you're eating... Um, calorie dense foods like animal products or also certain vegan junk foods um, and high fat foods but primarily animal products um, 
you're going to struggle and you're going to need to keep calorie restricting. So yeah, that's about it. And that's all um, I'm going to say on that. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up now. And um, I would love if you guys share your experiences in the comments below. What do you think of metabolic damage? Have you had experience with it? Do you think that it's to blame for a lot of people gaining weight on raw till four? Um, let's have a discussion. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Love you lots. Bye-bye.